The church in crisis. Whoever becomes Pope Benedict's successor as leader of the world's 1.1 billion Roman Catholics faces an enormous challenge. Can the church be reformed? We have a distinguished panel here to discuss that. Joining us are Jim Frederick, the international editor for Time magazine, Sister Maureen Fiedler, a Catholic nun and host of the public radio program Interfaith Voices, and Reverend Paul Rauschenbosch, uh, a Baptist minister and senior religion editor for the Huffington Post. So so nice to have all of you with us. Thanks Thank for joining you. Good us. Good to be here. Um, so, so we've been looking at Vatican City this morning and looking at what's taking place there and what will come next. Uh, what do you think should come next? And and can can the church get there? Can they make uh, the the types of reforms that are necessary? Well, I think we're in the season of Lent, and so this is a good time, actually, for the church to really be reflective about what it needs to be repentant of and how to create new life within the church come Easter. And that, so it's a very good season for it, uh, liturgically. And there's going to be a lot of uh, soul searching, I think, among the cardinals to figure out where is the place where we, the person with whom we can trust this sacred responsibility to lead us forward and really to, to in some ways, clean the church of a, a difficult time. I mean, this, as having reported this for the last three weeks since the resignation was announced, it seems to just get kind of worse and worse. Mm -hmm. The news has gotten worse and worse as scandal after stick scandal comes out. So I think we're ready for the next step. Jim, do you think, sorry, Maureen, just me one second. Jim, do you think the church is conscious that it needs to reform and change here? Well, there's various different communities within the church. I think it's really an open question whether this College of Cardinals perceives that there's enough of a crisis that they even want to change or reform. I mean, certainly the child sex abuse scandals that have been going on for decades and have really come to the fore oh, in the past okay. five or ten years are one thing. But some of the bigger issues that, you know, more secular-minded Catholics or even Protestants from, from other strains of Christianity consider really crucial, whether it's abortion, birth control, homosexuality, celibacy of priests, I'm not really sure you're going to see a lot of movement on that because this is a really conservative bunch of cardinals that were appointed by all of them were either appointed by Pope John Paul II or by Benedict. And when I look at that gathering in Rome, all I can ask myself is where are the women? Right. Where, are the, where is the younger generation in the church? Where are the married people? There's a whole swath of human experience that's unfortunately not represented in that conclave and needs to be. Well, how the, do you make that happen? It did not well, come anytime soon. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what I would hope for in a new pope. Not, someone who does not take on a monarchical kind of role, but who calls a new council of the church. Mm -hmm. But this is not a council of bishops I'm thinking of, but a council of the people of God. The Second Vatican Council said mm -hmm. the whole church was the people of God. So this would include laymen and lay women as well as priests and bishops from every continent and culture of the world. So they would come together and discern a future of the church. Is there such a person in that College of Cardinals? Is there a Pope John the Twenty Third lurking there? I don't know. And can, can, I, can I add? I would love to see the American Catholic nuns involved. Uh, I, I certainly <laughs> would. Too. I think that gets more stamp of too. approval. Can one person? I mean, there's a question of is there one person, but also the question of can one person make these yeah. this kind of change? Well, I don't think so. But, but I think it has to be. That's the reason. I think it has to be the entire uh, the. Curia in Rome, I think it has to be um, all of the, the cardinals have to realize this is a crisis. We're in a moment of change. I mean, there's a few names that come to mind. O'Malley was very, you know, viewed as someone who really went to Boston in a very low point yeah. and tried to clean up the reputation, especially around sex abuse scandals. There's some others, uh, Italian Cardinal Ravasi, who has been known to reach out to atheists, to your point, uh, who has uh, been in dialogue and, and, and promotes interfaith dialogue. I mean, so there, there are some, but it really is going to be, it's, it takes a village. And I think that it's going to really take everyone at the table to realize it. Well, to, you, to, to the point that you all have been making, I mean, we just were looking at some pictures there of the Cardinals, and you can't help but notice that it's a line of long, a long line of old men. Forget That's me. right. It is. And, it and, is. And, and who are just by generation not prone to want to reform things.
things. So you're basically, it seems to me you're saying this can't necessarily come from within the Cardinals. So if it's not going to come from that group, how is it going to happen? Well, I, I think there, there is a large movement within this community, meaning, you know, a small and very devout and, and traditional Catholic community that is saying it's okay if the Catholic Church gets smaller and more devout. And that might be the end game of this is that, and there's, you know, there's a phrase of cath cafeteria Catholicism that you don't get to choose what you do and you do not believe. And this isn't a matter of just the Catholic Church being more popular. If for the 21st century we're less popular, well, that's just the way it's going to be, some of them say. But, you know, there's a whole segment of Catholics, and I would call them social justice Catholics, people who want the Pope to not dwell on those issues of sexuality. People are sick of that. But who want a Pope who speaks strongly for economic justice and for peace in the world. And the Church has very strong teachings in those areas. They'd like a re-emphasis, and that could help revive a church in crisis, possibly. Right. We've got to leave it there, forgive me. Uh, Jim Frederick, Sister Maureen Fiedler, Reverend Paul Rauschenbusch, thanks so much for being here with us this morning. We could talk a long time about this. We really could. <laughs> Thank you to all of you, sincerely.